Hello, I'm Mark from War Games Illustrated, and this is... I'm James, and I am also from War Games Illustrated. And today, we are going to be looking at speed paints. Speed paints! Speed paints from Army Painter are claiming to be an all-in-one painting system to base, shadow, and highlight. They are indeed, and they're very fun, and we've been using them for a little bit now. We're going to show you some of the stuff we've done through this video. A whole range of different things? Yeah, all sorts. And when we do, there'll be a little sort of timer symbol that we'll show. That's how long we actually took to paint things. Yep. We think it was pretty fast. You can decide for yourself. But yeah, let's get into it. Let's go. So I'm a painter are claiming that these speed paints are very akin to contrast paints from, uh, from Citadel or the uh, instant colour from uh, Scale 75. Yes, that's true. Uh, and obviously getting things done quick is what all those sets aim to do. Uh, there's a starter set for 40 euros, but this is actually the mega set. Uh, this one isn't out yet. The starter set should be available around the time of this video. This set's 90 euros and it comes with 23 paints and then there's also a speed painting medium which helps you mix things. And a brush. Oh, and a brush. There's a brush free in brush. There's yeah. a free brush in both sets actually. Um, and also the bottles are 18 mil and they come with agitator balls which is really handy. Mm -hmm. So there's two in each preloaded and that means you can mix the paints really nicely. So that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. You get a really great range of, of tones full spectrum of colours that you'll need in there. They do mix together as well to produce uh, increase yes. in range, so that's that's really helpful. Yeah, there are, there's there's good variety across the range. Some of the paints are a little better than others in yeah. coverage and the way they come out. Um, but let's get past us talking. I mean, you've hopefully seen from the, the spins and stuff of what we painted that they work pretty well and you can get some good effects. But now let's, let's really dig in, get to the science part, and let's watch some paint dry. not actually going to just show us staring at a figure like idiots for that amount of time. Instead, Mark splashed some paint. I did. I threw a bit of paint on this uh, Perry Miniatures French Agincourt Man at Arms. Yeah, what paint is it you used on it this one? It was Magic Blue. Magic Blue. Okay, so we're going to do a quick time lapse of this. We let it dry for 15 minutes, but we've, we've condensed that down into 45 seconds. So, so here a we quick go. look at this. Yeah. Thing. So you can see the paint starting to dry here, and as it does, it sort of moves across the surface, right? Um, bit wobbly. Bit we wobbly. Were, we were all around it. Um, you can see it's resolving down underneath the belt and around the... Around the neck as well. The neck, neck yeah, yeah, accentuating that mould line, unfortunately. So you need to be ca uh, careful when you're cleaning up. Yeah. And then as it dries further, th that pulling around the arm and the creases, starts to resolve and you can see real good highlight style effects happen mm. there. And around those, uh, around the stitching around the, uh, the centre of the chest as well. Yep, and that's it. That's it done. It's now dry and it already looks okay. Looks not bad at all that. Yeah, not yeah. bad. No need for edge highlighted. Okay, so you're applying some paints to one of five other ones that you painted. Yeah. How do the paints go on, Mark? What's the consistency and stuff like? Overall, really effectively, especially over the Zenithal. Uh, they so they, they go over the highlights incredibly well and, and the shadows. Uh, so it, it just saves so much time when, when you're trying to paint miniatures quickly. Generally, our speed paint, it's, they, they, go, they, they, they work to the name very well. Yeah, and I mean, this Zenithal just accentuates what the speed paints do already. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it, but as you'll see later in the video, it really helps make them look more realistic. Mm -hmm. So I notice you've done the red and you're now you're putting on some yellow. Mm. Um, order of painting? Order those? of painting, ideally, you would start with the lighter tone and then uh, apply the, the more intense, uh, so like the darker one, so the red in this instance, which was the blood red. Yes. Um, 
but the way I did this one, because initially we weren't intending on doing the full miniature. It, well, it was like a learning experience. It was a learning right? experience. You were practicing, yeah, so threw the red on first. And I was careful enough, actually, with my application of paint that it wasn't too much of a problem. Yeah. Um, but if you really wanted to do be speedy, then, uh, yeah, start with your light color first. OK, well now we're on to another figure. We're just going to show the selected highlights of the painting yeah. process here. Quite a lot of metal on this one. A hell of a lot of metal. So obviously, there's no metallic speed paint. <laughs> so how did that work, man? Um, so the metallics. Uh, so obviously, I zenithaled uh, the miniature first. Then I painted all of the metallic uh, areas using uh, my favorite metallic paint, which is thrash metal from Skill Color. Uh, all the metallics were uh, painted using um, grim black. Yes. And it creates a nice, dirty, dark steel color. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. It's quite heavy, um, and you may personally want to water that one down or mix it with the uh, speed, speed paint medium just to thin it a little bit. Yeah, I found for thinning it was probably about a three to two. Three parts speed paint to two parts thinning medium was about the right kind of consistency for that. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd probably agree with that. Yeah, that works. Um, so then we're on to this one, which is, this one looks quite muted, especially in the face. And that's that's kind of a result of us doing the zenithal to some extent. Yeah. Um, that skin color would go over better over a really pure kind of undercoat. Yeah, if you, if you want to make the skin really pop, um, I would highly recommend painting all skin areas with a white base coat and then applying your skin tone. Irrespective of what the skin tone, the, the final skin tone want, you want to produce, over a, uh, a base of a white would probably really accentuate the highlights there, um, especially on a miniature such as this one where there's there's a lot of shadow involved. Yes, in it. and people might be screaming, but you meant to paint them white to start with, not zenithal. Mm. Bobkus, yeah, nonsense. Yeah, it's, we'll, we'll show you in a moment uh, that going over a, painting the speed paints over a zenithal is much more effective than For the most over. part. For the most part, yeah. the, the old color, like we said, with skin tone. Which yeah. I think the contrast paints, when they came out and with their specific white sprays, yeah. people got it in their heads that it has to be over white or it won't work. And that's just not true. You can it put it true. over anything. Yeah. So uh, then we're on to this one, uh, which. Running Man. I always love a Running Man. A Running Man. You yeah. can imagine him screaming. You can. In French. Yeah. He's got good tones on him. I quite like the slightly more natural tones going with this figure. Yeah, so he was painted using uh, Cloud Burst Blue. It's a bit of a mouthful, that one. <laughs> um, it's like, like, like you've just mentioned, James. It's a much more muted blue, um, but it's really, really natural. And uh, yeah, and, and very French being blue. Yes, of course. And I mean, each of these ones we've shown, there's not many details picked out on them. It's just the basics, but they look really tabletop ready. Very much so. And didn't take you very long. So another one in the natural palette. We're onto the final one here. Yeah, so this guy is wearing all like natural leather tones. Um, the sleeves were uh, painted using dark wood, and uh, the actual kind of like, the tunic that he's got on um, is pallid bone, which uh, is actually a really effective color for painting kind of light leathers. Uh, so don't just think that the names themselves dictate Ooh, yes. to what the uh, what the actual uh, item should be painted like the the green on the early one we looked at was the uh, orc skin green. Yeah, clearly it's not orc skin. No, it's uh, and it's not orc hide tunic is wearing either. And also, I mean, there is a hardened leather paint, but you opted to use a different one just to get that different effect and different coloration going. The on hardened there. leather is what I've used on the on the gloves of most of these miniatures, and you can see it's it's a much warmer, yes, a lot warmer tone than the other ones. And uh, given the kind of general feel of these miniatures being quite. Uh, Quite natural. I thought that the uh, the darker, cold tones uh, that you get with the dark wood much suited it much more effectively. Great stuff. Okay, so that's the uh, the French Agincourt infantry, all painted and based. Yeah, took no time at all. I even painted directly over sand using uh, dark wood as well. And again, speed painting looks, looks good. good. Yeah, thank you. The whole unit looks good. Like, well, it's not full unit, but. So it's a small infantry yeah. unit, especially for that period. <laughs> but, but keep that up, and you're going to yeah. have a great looking few blocks of infantry over a very short space. Of over time. a very short space of time. You could knock out 20 of these very easily in an hour. Ooh, I reckon. I, reckon that's ambitious. I think you could. OK. Yeah. Maybe not basin as well, but definitely painting. Right. Yeah. Just batch in through. Just batch it through. Yeah. OK. All right, we're uh, skipping ahead of a few hundred years here, moving to these bolt action warlord uh, late war British infantry. One hell of a mouthful of an introduction. Yeah, I've probably said guys. too many words. <laughs> 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 um, but you've painted each of these figures over a different primer or base coat because we yeah. wanted to show how that affects the paint. However, you've used the same actual speed paints on every part of every single model just to show 
yep. how things vary. Yeah. So first of all, white primer. White primer. So before I discuss how it looks over white primer, I just want to state that this was a mix of three parts camel cloak to one part malignant green. And that was put directly over a pure white primer in this miniature. And that's for most of the fatigues. And that's all the fatigues. I effectively just painted the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and then if you want to touch up any of the buckles and so on, you can go in later and do that. But for speed painting wise, you want to get in there. You want to throw the paint yeah. on and see what effect it produces. And you can see it's, it's really pale. It's almost lime green. It looks nothing like the camo yeah. uh, cloak on the on the palette. It was um, so yeah. This is a this is a bit too poppy. Yeah. So yeah. essentially, what you mix and what you see in your palette mm. is always going to be much lighter on the final miniature. Yeah. And we think that the swatches that they've used for each of the paints is a representation of that. That's kind of the mid tone, the top tone, yeah. and the shadow tone. Yeah. So so pay attention to those. And the problem over the white base it's nearly all the top tone. You've got an entire miniature of top tone. Yes, yeah, so so yeah, make sure you're mixing your colors so that they're darker than you actually want, yeah. and then they'll probably look good on the figure. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, so you've done that, and then you've, you've done a similar f effect where metal parts have been painted with metallic and then yeah. highlighted. We'll, we'll look at a different figure now to show a different part of it, but you can also see that the fatigues look completely different on this figure. Completely different. And again, just to remind you, it's the same mix of speed paints. It's yep. three parts camo to one part malignant green. And it, you, it's, an, it, it's remarkable at how different it looks. And this is just over a zenithal base. And immediately looks far closer to how the uh, British uh, army fatigues looked at the time. Yeah. Um, I think, however, the face may be, again, a bit too dark. The yeah. previous figure, that skin tone really picked out the face. Yeah. The Crusader skin came through really yeah. nicely over the white. So going to the back of the figure, you've kind of applied a few different tones there for all the gear. Yeah, we have. So the backpack itself was a mixture of camo cloak, holy white, and pallid bone at a one to one and a one ratio. And the little pouch on his uh, left uh, hip there, uh, so his satchel was a mix of camo cloak and holy white again at a one to one ratio. And uh, it just makes slightly different tones of green, which Again, just put straight over his Enethal, and it shows uh, uh, that kind of how, the effect that you can achieve. Um, and this is a running chap who's painted in the uh, the same kind of approach as well. Um, the gun itself was just uh, the um, grim black straight over the Zenithal, and it's really effective. It yeah, it took a matter of seconds. The boots exactly the same again, straight over the Zenithal. It picks out the details. It creates the shadows. You know, amazingly, the paints actually do, as I say, on the tin. They, uh, they kind of highlight and, and shadow all in one. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I think you and I, like, we quite often paint over zenithal base coats mm. anyway because we recognize that, that helps our painting. It yeah. might be a bit more of an alien concept to some painters. Yeah. Um, so we recognize that isn't for everyone. So we wanted to kind of find a, a happy medium between bright mm. white and zenithal. So you experimented with some colors underneath as the base coat. I did, yeah. So this one for the base coat was Vallejo model color pastel green. And that was just airbrushed on, covered in entire miniature. I painted the face uh, white, uh, obviously between the uh, Crusader skin going over the green would look slightly unusual. It may look a bit unwell. Like it just air, air dropped in or if, if it was a parrot, it would work <laughs> perfectly. Um, maybe it just come off uh, one of the landing craft. Yeah. Uh, and I have a slight green pallor to him. I actually like this tone. It's probably closer to an American um, uh, fatigue color uh, as opposed to the British. But I'm a big fan of this. And it's, and it's a simpler approach in the sense of you're just putting one one tone as a, as a base coat underneath. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I could go with that. So we went with that and we were like, well, we're on to something. I say we, yeah. it's mostly you. <laughs> so you went, you really pushed it with this next one, this final one we're looking at, because you, you kind of doubled up. So this next one was a bit of an experimentation. We started off with a, uh, a, uh, a zenithal uh, base coat. And then once that was dry and ready, I put a, uh, an entire layer over the entire miniature of pallid bone to add a degree of uh, a brown warmth to him, which is kind of an undertone that you get on the British uniform. Yeah, so that it's given it a really interesting effect. It's almost like you've pre-shaded it with a tone, mm. which then, the, because of the translucency of the following paints, yeah. that comes through too. It, yeah, it, it, was, it was an experiment, and I'm actually a big fan of this one. It doesn't add that much to what you get with the finished effect on the Zenithal ones, but it does have a bit more of a warmth to it, and 
if I had to choose, this is probably the approach that I would take. It doesn't take that much longer, especially if you batch paint in a couple of sections of them. You're going to be throwing this on at such a rate that it, it, it maybe adds a few minutes per uh, per miniature at the most. Yeah, but you still took very little time. We, yeah, we're really actually being quite generous with the ten minutes. Like you can get this paint on so quick, as you can see in the video. Yeah. Your brush doesn't need to be that controlled. It, it really does not. And if you're painting an army and you want them to look decent on the board, it's a really effective way for it to go. Yeah, maybe spend a little more time on this because you've probably got less figures than in a giant Wars of the Roses or yeah. Agincourt yeah. or yeah. 100 Years War kind of force if you're doing older stuff. Agincourt is perfect, especially for the rear rank units. You, you can be chucking that paint on at a, a rapid rate. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that really highlights the different approaches you can take over different base codes, mm -hmm. so something to consider. So here's the finished eclectic mix of bolt action figures yep. here. Even with that randomness, they, they kind of look quite cool as a unit because yeah. you base them. You take this guy out, it's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> if you do a whole unit like that, it'll probably look uh, all right too. Yeah. Depends on your taste. That's all really fast. Mm. Very, very fast. But let's speed paint things speedier. It's time for the airbrush moment. Remarkably, and one of my favorite attributes of these paints, you can throw them from an airbrush. Yes, very easily. That was kind of where I took over the speed painting because mm. screw using a brush. <laughs> it's old news. Let's put it through an airbrush. Um, yeah, first I picked this figure from Gripping Beast, which is an order militant uh, figure, and pure white. And then Fire Giant Orange went through the airbrush. Normal sort of PSI, mm. about 20. Quite a heavy coat, no thinning. Mm. And it dried really quite well. It looks really effective. Um, this is one of those instances where you can see paint does go well over white. Just yes. because <laughs> it didn't go well over white for for the uh, British infantry doesn't mean that it can't sometimes go over white. It, you've just got to pick your battles and, and choose when, when it does go over that or not. Indeed. And then uh, we move to a Games Workshop figure, which is a spoil, spoil Pox Scrivener, I think it's called. Obviously, it's got a ridiculous name because it, it's a Games it's Workshop GW, figure. Yep. Um, <laughs> This was a zenithal base coat, and I really wanted to do a cruel test and put the zealot yellow, because yellow is always a tough color. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, it's over a darker base underneath, so that was really the test. Mm. It looks quite good. It's definitely an effect. It is an effect, yes. Um, <laughs> but the top points of the yellow, yeah. it's quite vibrant, it's quite warm, and it looks quite good. Again, yeah. went through really well. Um, I did find, however, to get the really good effect, you want to thin it a little bit. Mm. If you use too much water to thin it, it can actually spider web on the surface. Okay. So, so probably best to use the medium. Yeah. Okay, next up, we have a building construction of some type. Yeah, we're back to more Games Workshop stuff just because it was sitting in my studio. This is <laughs> uh, a silver base coat done with an army painter spray. And then I've just put hardened leather over it, slightly changing the focus to get different tonality. Um, it does a kind of candied effect. It's quite nice. It does, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so again, airbrush works on metals. One thing you can see is there's a few chips and bits off it. That's because I handled it just before it dried. Be careful with that because yeah. the paint, it's very tacky and it will yeah. stick to your fingers. Do you recommend giving some of these paints a, a clear coat to varnish afterwards or was it just because it wasn't quite ready yet to be handled? I would say that's always advised, but I have to say that those previous figures we just looked at, I carried yeah. them to work in my bag today with no protection and they still look pretty good. Okay, so, it's so quite it, hardy. Was just, it, was, it was a peculiar event as opposed to common. Yeah, Anything okay. with my painting is a peculiar event. <laughs> And then finally, just over silver again, I just wanted to try the kind of thing that you'll do for a proper candy, shiny color finish on figures. Nothing fancy. Uh, this is the magic blue, which Mark used on his Agincourt guy to begin with. This is how it looks over metallics. And then I just sprayed a little brown around the foot area just to show a slight transition. They're pretty fancy, those guys. They're, they're yeah. pretty flashy. Um, it works well. Again, very similar to what contrast paints would do. I've used this sort mm. of thing with contrast paints. Yeah. It's a good effect though, and they, they, they go on nicely. So we actually wanted to see if speed paints could out-contrast Citadel Contrast. Oh, that one makes much nicer noise. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So round one to uh, speed round, paint, round yeah. one to speed paints. Okay, so what I did was these uh, space re miniatures, and I just gave them all a Xenophil highlight. Uh, base coat and I threw on quite liberal and quite quickly. First of all, for the contrast paint, I used uh, Blood Angels Red, and for the uh, for the speed paint, we used Blood Red. So clearly, 
trying to market the same team uh, group yeah, of painters yeah. there. Uh, not much differentiation in name. And they, they do look really similar when it's finished. You've obviously finished the other details. Mm. All the other details are done with the speed paints. Yeah. But the armour itself yeah. is pure contrast here and pure speed paint here. Yeah, very much so. Which do you prefer? I'd probably say speed paint. Yeah, I probably would. There's a bit more differentiation between the between the highlights and the shadows. Uh, yes. Whereas with the contrast, it's a nice finish. Don't get me wrong, but it's much more uniform throughout, which is strange. And that's closer to what you get with traditional acrylic paint. Yeah, the speed paint is much more effective at producing that kind of differentiation. I think it highlights that you know when contrast came mm. out, it was the advertising slogan was one thick coat, which doesn't really work that well with contrast paint. And I think for speed paints, if you are doing that one thick coat, mm. we would suggest you do a slightly thinner coat. But yep. if you are doing one thick coat, it works better with speed paints for the most part. Some paints it does good. It does. Um, so not a very scientific test, really. But It wasn't the most scientific, but likewise, you can see there's an immediate difference from them. And it's as yeah. objective as you're going to get with paints. You yeah. can't get much more <laughs> objective on a on miniature on a paint. One thing I do want to add, if you have started painting your army with the Citadel uh, Blood Angels Red, you can easily transition over to Blood Red from Speed Paint. Yeah, they're close enough in that if these miniatures were in the same unit, you wouldn't. Yeah, you're, not gonna be you're not going to notice which, which which is the difference. And ultimately, eventually, you might find some contrast suit you needs better. Some Speed Paints. Yeah, there's nothing against mixing and matching your range. Yeah, you could probably even mix them together to produce different colours as well. You need to put go a little, crazy. Little thing along the bottom. This we don't know this for sure. We've not mixed them. We yet. need to try this. It this might is explode. We'll try. <laughs> I don't. Maybe. Hopefully it'll explode. <laughs>